If you don't pay close attention to Joe Biden, you're probably content to dismiss him as just a senile old fool who's exiting the stage at high speed. But if you actually listen to him, if you watch what Joe Biden says, it dawns on you, actually, this man is evil, actually evil. Listen to what he says. It's dishonest. It's vicious. It's cruel to his fellow Americans. He's a bad person, and he's the president of the United States. And yet no one seems to say that out loud or even notice. Instead, our moral superiors, <laughs> our overlords, are very exercised about, well, some people you've probably not even heard of, people on the Internet who are saying true things. And one of the people who makes the maddest is a guy really an account called Cat Turd. Yes, that's the name, one word, on X, formerly Twitter. Cat Turd has millions of followers and is remarkably, remarkably controversial for a person whose name has never been spoken in public. He actually got into a fight with Adam Kinzinger, no less than Adam Kinzinger. Speaking of evil, here's, uh, in case you've forgotten it, here's what it looked like. Kinzinger made that clear the other day when he responded personally to a Twitter account called Cat Turd. Because when you're one of Washington's leading authorities on foreign policy, you spend a lot of time on Twitter reading accounts with names like Cat Turd. So the other day, Cat Turd made the mistake of posting a meme that seemed to mock the colors of the Ukrainian flag, colors that are sacred to Adam Kinzinger and every other empathetic soccer mom in her mid-40s. You can imagine how offensive that was. It was like telling an off-color joke about Meghan Markle. It could not stand. And so alone and battling debilitating hot flashes in his kitchen, fighting the urge to open yet another bag of Chips Ahoy, Adam Kinzinger fought back. Literal evil, he wrote in a late night response to Cat Turd. If I met you in person, it would not end well for you, sicko. Whoa, hear that, Cat Turd? It will not end well for you. That's not a pillow fight Adam Kinzinger is talking about. That's a full on slap fight with hair pulling. This is real. You'd better apologize. Our heart goes out to Cat Turd tonight, who's probably cowering in a litter box somewhere, waiting for Adam Kinzinger to show up with sharpened nails. <laughs> so Cat Turd enraged Adam Kinzinger and has also been noticed on late night comedy shows. Watch. And things seemed to hit a new low last night as he retweeted three times an account called Cat Turd. <laughs> Now, to be fair, the cat is wearing glasses, so it must be smart. <laughs> the actual Twitter handle for the account is CatTurd2. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what's in store from CatTurd3. <laughs> CatTurd sounds like someone Joe Biden would have brought up in a speech during the primaries. Ah, uh, when I was growing up in Scranton, there was a real mean son of a gun. We used to call him CatTurd. <laughs> he could do up and bebop like nobody's business. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, climate change. <laughs> well, there's a reason nobody watches late night comedy shows anymore. But still, Cat Turd seems to offend people. Why is that? Who is this man? Who's Cat Turd 1? Well, we found him. He's a man. He's from the South. That's all we know. He wants to keep his name private because he doesn't want his life any more disrupted than it already has been. But he is joining us anyway in physical form. Cat Turd, it's great to see you. How are you doing? So <laughs> <laughs> you made it, Tucker. So many questions. So it. many questions. Okay. So um, I actually don't know your real name, just for the record. OK. Um, wh what year did you graduate from Yale? Um, yeah, I graduated Yale, I think 1984. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'm guessing you didn't go to Yale. And I mean, that no, I went to Harvard after you Yale. went to Harvard. <laughs> well, I remember you so well there. Um, where, where are you like what what was your preparation for being cat turd like tell us your life trajectory who are you without revealing your name <laughs> well i'm from northwest florida i mean georgia um, same thing yeah well i live in northwest uh, florida now but so i uh, i graduated high school kind of early at 17 joined the army um I, I was telling you earlier i spent my 18th birthday in a foxhole in uh, fort dix new jersey in basic training back when it really was basic training uh, and then um, I, I got injured when I was over in Bad Kissingen, Germany, and we were on alert, and I hurt my back real bad and had surgery. Ooh. And that was pretty much the end of my Army career. I was a medevac uh, back to Fort Gordon, Georgia, had back surgery. I, I actually tried to stay in, but um, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been something I've had to deal with my whole life. So they wrecked your body and then kicked you out? Yeah. Pretty <laughs> good. Okay. Well, you know, it was an honorable <laughs> medical d discharge, but... 
Yeah, and so um, after that, um, I hitchhiked to Panama City, and I've pretty much been in, in, in the Panhandle ever since. You know, I'm 59 years old. Um, I spent, you know, just like most people, I was, um, I'm, I'm different than most of the influencers that uh, do all the right things, have the kids, wear the suit and ties. I pretty much was... Um, screwed up until i was about 40 45 years old <laughs> you were. i had a couple of failed marriages uh followed by uh I, I was just i was a professional musician for a year i was a hippie i had long hair and a beard and and smoked weed and had a, a vw van and wore really dyed shirts i did i did i was a real hippie um i uh, uh went from job to job partied a lot here there yeah i partied a lot i had i had my, my my stint with drugs and alcohol and you know i don't know why everybody's scared to admit it you know everybody paints this well, i'm not big famous picture you know yeah. this big picture of how um you know in, in the world that we live in today it's just like i just i've always been honest with my followers and on my podcast um i don't I, trust I, people who don't know how weak they are yeah <laughs> i know yeah and so i um kind of aimlessly went through my life and uh, um, then I finally ended up you know wor working a good fiber optics job for years um, at 54 years old which was five years ago I'd never been on social media I didn't know anything about social media I didn't even know how it worked I had no friends on social media and I just decided to I've, uh, I got arthritis in my fingers I couldn't play guitar anymore and I was just like you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna get on Twitter and I just you know Saw the cat, just said cat turd. I never thought I'd have a hundred followers. You know, who 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 would think that it's just like it's like Homer Simpson now, cat turd. It's, it's way beyond me. You know, they're doing. Uh, Wait, if I could just ask you to pause. What was the moment when when you decided to make that your numb to gear? <laughs> I just was like uh, uh, surfing through the web, and I saw that cat picture, and it just cat turd. It was that simple. I mean, who, you know, I didn't think anybody was ever going to follow me. I remember asking people for weeks, how do I post a picture on here? And so I don't even know how it took off. It just got legs somehow, and it just took off. So, but why did you do it? Why did I do what? Why did you go online and start giving your opinions? I don't know. Well, I've always been, um, as a professional musician um, in, the, in the 90s, um, you, you know, you have to be good at construction. <laughs> yeah. Construction, you, yeah, because you got to make money. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna make. It. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little slow. I yeah. missed that. So you better learn to build stuff. So you know, me and my band guys, we were we were builders. You know, we built decks, roofs, built a built a house, whatever. And so in the '90s, uh, you, you're bored, and you know, we played music at night. We didn't want to listen to music, so I started listening to Rush Limbaugh. Really? So every day we'd listen to Rush Limbaugh while we we're building houses, whatever. You and, and every construction crew in America. Yeah. And it, it just, it just like, this is, I didn't even know. I was a hippie. I thought I was a, a liberal. I didn't know what I was still. And I was like, this guy's saying everything I believe. And um, it was, um, it was, uh, you know, I listened to him to the day he died. Really? Yeah. I was total rush, baby. And it was just like, this guy's talking exactly what I think. And I never even knew what I was until, you know, I, I, I started listening to him. But that's how I got in. And I was just a political junkie from the first time I heard him. And it's just been like that ever since. So I got on, you know, Twitter, now X, and just started posting. And, man, what a five years. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It is. I mean, d d but, but why did you do that? I mean, a lot of people have political opinions, but they don't imagine that other people want to read them or they don't feel compelled to share them with the world on a social I, media app. I don't know why it caught fire. Um, but why did I, you want to do it? Because you were frustrated? Yeah, I guess so. I just, you know, I think as an artistic, um, although I, I didn't play on stage a lot in the last uh, years, I would always go to my room and I wrote a lot of music. I actually wrote my best stuff then. And it was just, I, I need that artistic outlet somehow. Yes. And uh, when I lost that, I, I was really kind of depressed because I'd lost my fingers. It was like overnight, they started swelling up. I got arthritis from playing guitar and, and, and using power tools my whole life. And... Um, I was just like, I just need to do something. And so I just got on social media. It's just, it's just the spur of the moment. It was my birthday. It was like two days after my birthday. I said, I'm going to join Twitter. And I was asking people, I was calling people, how do you join Twitter? Well, how do you do a picture? <laughs> Is there a post? membership committee? Yeah, what's the rules? <laughs> <laughs> 
so when at what point did it i can't remember the first time i saw it but um at what point did you realize it was working i don't know i remember after two or three months i was i was working on a job in miami and i told one of my friends that was that was rooming with me at the time we were working there i said man this thing's really taking off and he thought i was crazy as a what and i said this cat turd thing and he's just he, he thought i was nuts because you know everybody did and i was trying to tell everybody this thing's really taking off and everybody just like whatever you know here's the shovel start <laughs> get them rocks over there and oh <laughs> And it just it just caught fire. I, I don't know how. I don't know how it did. And it just keeps going. Wow. I mean, so you're you're in Miami rooming with another guy that you're working with. Yeah. On some kind of job. Yeah. 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 Fiber optics job. I did fiber optic construction for years after I got uh, finished, you know, with my music career. <laughs> and like at the point that Adam Kinzinger starts replying to you and threatening your life. Oh yeah. By the way that would be quite a slap fight. I, do you feel confident you win? I don't know, you know. it's I'm, He's scary. You know? <laughs> I want to see eye to eye with him, so I'm going to go get a, a Home Depot five-gallon bucket and so he can stand on it. <laughs> <laughs> but when Adam Kinzinger himself, oh, yeah. who's got a, you know, he's got Ukraine to defend. Oh, yeah. He's super busy. Um, All he cares about. Transitioning or whatever he's doing. Um, when he takes time to attack you and threaten to beat you up, or scratch you yeah like and that wasn't my meme i just said i think i said i shouldn't be laughing at this but it's funny yeah and then um and then it made it worse you know once he does that that he don't, he, he don't understand how the internet works now they got his face on it yeah you know what i mean now now all the time you see that meme it's his face on it now well how do you understand how the internet works i don't know i just somehow do <laughs> interesting yeah so what has it done to your life well it, it, it's totally changed my life. Um, you know, financially, I started sell, selling merch, and then uh, I got a podcast. You know, we got uh, Jules and I, I have a, a co-host, Jules uh, Jones. Our podcast is called In the Litter Box. And, you know, we got to deal with Rumble, which we love. We love Rumble. And um, and then, you know, fast forward to these ad shares, which are crazy, you know, with Elon Musk. I mean, it's big money. And um, I, I bought a new truck a couple of weeks ago. I never had a new vehicle in my life, you know. And to be able to do something like that for me, I mean, I think a lot of people, I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck for both, most of my life. I know what it's like to live like a tea bag, you know, at the end of the work day and be so yeah. sore. I know what it's like to choose from your rent and food. I know what it's like to um, ride around on four different tires you know, one's got three plugs one's got yeah. five plugs one's got 13 plugs in it you know we call them baloney skins no tread <laughs> so i think i think a, a lot of people just um, um i'm kind of like the rudy of twitter i probably don't deserve to be there but i i, I worked hard enough to maybe get that one play at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the game it's the most american story <laughs> it, ever it really is nuts. it really is it nuts. is nuts there's there's I don't think there's a lot of people like my situation because, like I said, most of the influencers are, I mean, they just, they've, they've, and, and they did the right thing. Not me. I did the wrong thing. They did yeah. the right thing. They've got great wives and kids and, and, uh, you know, they've made a lot of money. They've got, you know, parents that are successful and they went to college. For sure. And, and I'm just a working class stiff. That, well, that's you know. the ruling class of the country. Yeah. And I'm from it, so I know. I know. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty amazing to see this happen to you. It is. And, and, and so how much of your day is spent on it? Pretty much seven days a week. I'm, I'm an insomniac. I always have been. So I get up at four or five, and I basically do it seven days a week you know 15 hours a day what is so but you're you spent your life moving physically moving outside obviously yeah. it's been hard on your body as yeah. you said oh it has but it's also there's something good about moving and not, i mean what's yeah. it like the change at 55 to go from you know being on the road installing fiber cable to sitting behind a screen all day oh it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> screw moving <laughs> <laughs> No, but well, I, I, <laughs> sorry, that's I've, so awesome. I've, I've, I've got, you know, I, I, I've got 13 rescue pets and I still, t you know, I, I still take care of my, um, I got a little, I got a horse wrench, but there's no horses, it's got a barn and the whole deal. 
and uh, it's fenced in where my dogs can run free, and I chase them around all day. 13 and, rescues? Yeah, 13 now. What's that like? It's, um, well, I post all the pictures online, and it's all these beautiful pictures, but they don't see all the fights and the growling, and, you know, they're... He's swallowing a bone, and he swallowed a rope, and they're all chasing a squirrel, and they're fighting, and you know they don't see all that. But it's, it, it. I don't know what happened, um, but they just started coming to me. I, I've never been to a rescue a shelter. They, I've found all of my pets uh, starving and beaten and abandoned, and uh, and just on the side of the road. All the dogs, except I got two puppies. One of the dogs I got. Uh, uh, came in and she was young i didn't think anything about it and she got pregnant and before i knew it it was just like i had 10 puppies <laughs> too on top of this and it's funny because i gave them away and they got twitter accounts they got huge twitter accounts people follow the puppies they're called puppy turds <laughs> <laughs> uh why do you adopt so many animals i just i mean uh, when you see a, a dog starving what are you going to do and then i try to tell myself i'm going to rehome some of these um, and then you spend so much time with them trying to just like get them fed. And yeah. They're, they're so, the ones I, I find, they're so almost dead, starving to death. So, and then I fall in love with them and I can't let them go. And it's that, that simple. Wow. That's, I mean, that's pretty, um, that's pretty amazing. But I got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can afford the dog food. Yeah. So, um, I can. And, um, i you know, it's just kind of turning thing where people say, hey, cat turd, I got a rescue we found on the side of the road, so I'll post it or I'll repost it. And uh, it's just turned into something I do. I've had kennels built, and uh, you, you got to keep them separated. Some of them, you know, they're from, some of them I find they're 10 years old. Some I find they're puppies, and some of them just don't like each other. So. Yeah, dogs are like that. Yeah. It's hard to get pack cohesion. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're not telling us your real name or taking your glasses off, which I, which I respect. But tell us why. Tell us why that would be a concern in well, a supposedly I, free country. Yeah. So um, number one, I'm, I like being in the background. I, I get invited to all the uh, red carpet events and stuff, but I never go. It's just not my thing. Uh, but I mean, for just saying my opinion, and that's all I do. I just give my opinion. I just like look at each issue, and. They call me a right-wing fanatic on Wikipedia, and you know all these hit pieces they do. But you know, I hate the Republican and Democrat Party equally. Me too. I mean, we have a country now. Ninety-nine percent of Washington D.C. is just corrupt, and um, we're the resist. You're not the resist. <laughs> you know the people they yeah. online. Uh, we are the resist, and, and and we're just trying to fix the country. So for doing my common. You know, sense opinions. I get death threats. I've been swatted three times. They try to have me murdered. Tell us, well, tell us what that's like. Well, it always usually happens during my podcast. But so, um, the last time they they call and pretend to be me, and they said that um, uh, that I caught my wife in bed with somebody, and I'm not married. So, and I shot them both. And then when the police get there, I'm going to kill them. So they'll try to come up and get you. They try to get you murdered. That's what it is. It's attempted murder, if you ask me. During your podcast. During the po It's always during the podcast. It's, it's happened to me three times. It's happened to a lot of us. You know, it's happened to Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tim Pool. Um, but when, once, you know, everybody's, once you get to a certain level, they're, they're going to come after you. I have, they've. Lately, they've been cutting heads off rabbits and throwing them off the body over my gate. So Serious. That, that's happened three times now, too. So we live in a country where the citizenry is surveilled much more thoroughly than North Korea surveils its own citizens. Like everything you do is sure. monitored, right, through your phone, facial recognition, satellites, everything is monitored. But they can't find the people who are doing this? Yeah, and, and are they even interested in finding it if it happens to to us you know i mean who do we call who do you call who do you call because there is nobody now the local police where i live are awesome and i support the blue i always have i just don't support the feds at yeah. all i mean look what they've turned into tucker it's 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 awful so you I, call the local cops when yeah. this happens and what do they say well the first time i did it they were like you're cat turd aren't you <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, so I, I I left them after the first time. I gave them a bunch of gear, you know. Here, here's some cat turd stuff. But they they actually come and and they patrol my property a lot. 
mainly because it's a one horse town. There's nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they're great and they, and they watch it like a hawk. You know, they're very protective of it. But it's like if somebody on the left annoys me, which they do a lot, I'll mute them. Right. If, 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 if I annoy people, which I understand I do, they try to have me killed. I mean, that's a big gap, isn't it? Right, it's a big gap. Muting? Yeah. <laughs> Attempted murder. <laughs> big. <laughs> so you spend your life watching what's happening. Oh, yeah. What conclusions have you drawn? Where do you think we're going this year? Well, we're in trouble. I mean, it's just, God, I, I always try to be positive, but sometimes I can't see a way out of it anymore. Can you? I mean, I just don't see a way out of it. And I'm a Trump supporter. I'm a Trump guy. Yeah. Um. If you, you know, I go back to the, it cracks me. The, the funniest thing to me on X is all the people that do whatever the government says that put resist in their bio. Yeah. That's the no. funniest thing, to, you know, <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Obedient yeah, little yeah, bitches. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he, whatever. And and um, they, can, uh, they can tell them anything and they'll do it. What, if you can convince your voters that men can have babies, yeah. think about that. You've got them. You can, tell them, wear, them. You can tell, them, tell them to wear a dirty diaper on their head, and they're going to do it. <laughs> they will. They'll, and, and well, they did, actually. And you're racist if you don't have a dirty diaper <laughs> on your head. <laughs> but once once they can convince you of that, I mean, you got to know these people are laughing when they're at the bar, the Democrats, saying that we've convinced them that men can have babies. And they believe it. And they're calling everybody names that doesn't believe it. So do you see that changing at all? I believe the woke is... The woke part of it is coming to a head. I really do. I think it's people are tired of it. I am. We don't care what names you call us. And and I'm a person who believes I don't. You know, I was a hippie. I was a real hippie, not one of these fake hippies online. I was an yeah. actual hippie. I mean, I lived up. Uh, I was homeless at one time. I lived up in a tent, but in a lake for months. How was it? Um, it was good. I could call a lot of crappy, and I ate them <laughs> 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 every night. Um, you had crappy every night. Oh well, you, know, you gotta you gotta eat somehow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it it's it, it it's a it's a rough spot to be in. But um, where what were we talking about? You're saying that people are getting sick of the yeah. anti-white stuff, the trans mm -hmm. stuff, all that. But do kids have a chance? I mean, think think about this. Um, I I'm 59, and I think you're in your 50s. And we went to school. There was. Uh, you know, we actually learn mathematics, social studies, history, yeah. but they think about a kid these days. He goes to school. So they start when they're three or four in kindergarten, and they don't have a chance. They they look what they do to them now. They're like critical race theory. You get over there, all oh, you are racist, and you're okay. You're a racist, and then they put a mask on you, and and they 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 teach you that the air you breathe is poison. And then they tell you you're all going to die and burn in a hellfire from global warming in 12 years. Think about these little kids, how scared they are. They scare yeah. the hell out of them. Yeah, they do. And then it's uh, uh, trans this. And, 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 and they're showing BJs to seven years old in books. Yeah. And, 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 and then they go through the whole school and it's like that. And then they step into college and what's college? It's turbo now. You know? yeah. and, and they're brainwashed through. And I honestly think the longer you stay in college – the dumber you get now. I don't think there's any question that. about it. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And and so you have these teachers, so they go they go through that, and then they go and they stay in college as long as they can until they're 30 years old. And then they go right from there to a teaching job, so they stay on campus until they're 50. So they don't have any life experience. They've never, they don't know what it's like to, to work for a living or, or run a business. And they're the ones teaching, you know, and it's just, it's, it's horrible. So they, they don't have a chance. So all of this or some of it is going to come to a head this calendar year because of the presidential election. Oh, yeah. Where do you see that going? Well, man, Trump's going to win the primary. I, th I hope everybody knows that. We can yes. haul him all around and um, uh, fight each other and the DeSantis people. We're all I'm in there. We're all fighting each other. But Trump's going to win the primary and he should win it. Um. But, man, uh, what they're doing to him. And they're not, they're, they're not doing it to Trump to do it to Trump. They hate him. But uh, I always say on the podcast that Washington's okay as long as they have George Bush 
versus Obama every year. That's what they want. They want yeah. George Bush versus Obama. Every four years, they split up the $4 trillion with their friends. Some of them get it sometimes. Some of them get it. But that, that's what they want. They want Bush versus Obama. They're okay with that. Yeah. They love Nikki Haley. Of they, course they I, do. You know. Um, Can I ask you to pause? And, yeah. And since you're online all day, do you think there's organic support for Nikki Haley? There's none. Okay, because she's... I'm not even sure she's an actual human being. Yeah. She's the most dangerous Republican primary candidate we've had, probably one of them in my lifetime. Why do you say that? She's just, I mean, some of the things she said lately, she's a neocon, number one. Yeah. I mean, my God. How, how many times are you going to be fooled, America? I mean, from the Vietnam War, it's Vietnam. North Vietnam beats South Vietnam. It's, it's over for our country. Yeah. So let's send 60,000 people to die. Korea was the same way. All yeah. the Middle Eastern wars. And uh, she she's right in there. Ukraine, Ukraine. But unlike Ukraine. you, she served our country in unit. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. 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 But but she's dangerous. And, and remember when she said a, a week ago, if you're anonymous on Twitter or whatever, I want your name. That's what she said. You got to register with the government to give your opinion. I want your name. Not the government wants it. I do. Yeah. She's dangerous. I just I get a feel for people. I've always had a knack, knack to kind of feel people yeah. out. And and I just it's just she's like Mike Pence. Yeah. She's nothing they say is authentic. Everything sounds like it's program cliches. Yes. Um, I've had a lot of bosses in my life and some nasty ones. You know that's the way bosses are. Yeah. And every person I've ever talked to in my life and every boss I ever had, they talk exactly like Trump. All of them. Yeah. I don't have anybody in my life that sets up there like Mike Pence and, you know, a bird in the hands worth two in the bush. <laughs> you know, just every cliche you can imagine. Do you get a creepy vibe off Pence? Total. I say on the podcast sometimes, I, I don't know what skeletons he's. I'd hate to see what goes on there when the lights go out of his house. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm it's not. Just, nobody's that perfect, you know, quit acting perfect. I remember that time he was like, I can't even have lunch with another woman because I'm married, even if we're friends. Remember when he said that? Yeah, that's when I was like, yeah, I had I had a lot of thoughts about that. Which I'm not gonna share. <laughs> I mean, by the way, I think you should, if you're married, you should really actively try not to commit adultery. I think that's, I, do a, too. I totally agree with that 100%. But him specifically saying that, I reached exactly the opposite conclusion. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't trust them when, when they're, when, when they're that perfect. And they, it's all, it's just like, it's planned Everything they say is planned, and I just that that's why I like Trump. You know, does Trump make some bad? Everybody, I don't believe everything you say. I don't, you don't believe everything I say. I don't believe every Trump doesn't believe everything I say. But I mean, what they're doing now, he's already an iconic figure, and they're going to turn him into a martyr, and they're making him more powerful and more powerful and more powerful. And um, I could see him if the election was fair. I could see him just totally steamrolling if it was fair i know it would be you think it will be uh well who do we have uh to fight who do we have to fight ron mcdaniels give me a break i mean we got scott pressler out there beating the streets he's beating the street like a you know like a bicycle clown out there he is going around everywhere he's registering voters he's on the ground and the, and the republican party won't give him the time of day he knows every rule to every county in this country and that's if you could have a thousand of him out there and they train another thousand, you could sweep this thing. Why do you think they're not doing that? Well, I mean, why would you have someone as mediocre and incapable as Ronna McDaniel who has no track record of success in, in any area? Why would she run the Republican Party? That's I, pretty weird. Right? I have no idea. I remember when, every, you know, 90 percent of the people were complaining about her, you know, getting the job again. I remember one of the donors so the yeah, yeah. This has nothing to do with y'all. The donors picked this. I remember reading a story like that. and That sounds true. It's true. They don't care. They don't care about us. They're, I mean, I always say, especially when it comes to Trump, the, the, Demo the Democrats will cheat and the Republicans will let him because they hate Trump. Yeah. They hate him. And, I mean, it's a simple choice to me. I mean, if you he's the only resist president in my lifetime. Why do you think they hate him so much? because he's not a part of their club it, this is not about trump to me it's just like this is an outsider and we're going to destroy his life and we're going to show everybody out there 
that if you pick an outsider, somebody that we hadn't picked, going back to a Bush versus you know Obama situation, if if it's not the people we pick that are we're okay with, we're going to destroy their lives. We're going to they can't even get a lawyer. They'll arrest your lawyer for defending you. Yeah. And we're going to make up stuff. We're going to say your property that's worth a billion dollars is worth thirteen dollars and seventy four cents. We're going to do whatever we can. And, and this is to show not just Trump, but to anybody in the next 50 years, we will stick the FBI, the CIA, we will destroy you if you're not our chosen people. And that's what I think is going on. If Trump is prevented from appearing on the ballot in November, if he's arrested, you know, something even worse happens, which is entirely possible. That's the next step. Of course it's the next step. I don't even want to say it out loud. Everyone knows. I, I hate saying it. No, of course. I'm not going to, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, but if he is prevented, if democracy is prevented from proceeding, what do you think the response from his voters is going to be since you follow this carefully? Well, why do you think they do the January 6th things? They want you scared that if you do anything, you could be you know, 80 foot away, you know, outside the tape of the Capitol. You could be a half a mile away, and they're going to come after you. Because there haven't been any, I mean, this used to be a country where people felt free to assemble, as is guaranteed them in the Constitution, to make their views known. The demonstrations know. and rallies, you haven't seen, January 6th was the last one on the right that I'm aware of. They, that's what they're trying to do, scare you. So, but do you think that there will be demonstrations if something... Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. But like I say, they're just making it more powerful. Making Trump more powerful. Yeah. I mean, I hate to tell you libs this, but because of you, in 100 years, they're not going to be talking about me or even you. They're going to be talking about Trump in 100 years. I agree with that. He's going to be one of the biggest figures in, in, in the history of our country. Not because of what he did, but because of how they're treating him. Uh -huh. And they're making him more powerful. And if he gets arrested and gets put in a jail, can you imagine... <laughs> And, and it could happen. People say it couldn't happen. Oh, it could happen. It could happen very easily. Yeah. Who should he pick as his running mate? Oh, man, I go back and forth from this. Um, I would like to say this, that I don't think the VP pick really matters that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got Harris as a VP that proves right. it. Yeah. But I'll tell you, it takes a long time for me to trust you, but I'm starting to like Vivek. And I'm yeah. not sure if he's fake, and I'm not sure if it's just a show. But man, he's pissing them off. Oh, as bad as me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they hate him. They, they hate do, him. and he's saying, I mean, boy, he the them them debates. My God, he got Rona McDaniel. He got all of them mad. But he, and isn't it funny? He's running the campaign exactly what DeSantis should have been running. He's yeah. running the campaign that DeSantis. But DeS DeSantis is running a Nikki Haley campaign. D does it seem that way? It does to me. Why? I think you said something about his online team is just so cringe. And I and I, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have gotten involved in that. I've been trying to stay out of it. I just um, and I know well, some they of them are and they but yeah, it does. yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, uh, people like, you know, consi people build trust with you. It's consistency over time. Yeah. And when you're a Trump supporter, well, some of them hated Trump. Then you loved Trump, and you loved him, and now you love DeSantis. And then if he's gone, you're going to love Nikki Haley. People don't trust that. And I don't have anything against any of them. I mute a lot of them. Um, I don't carry grudges with yeah. these people, and I welcome anybody in when it's over. Of course. You know, I don't have any grudges. Do you think that, but it does seem, I mean, I don't follow it very closely, I'll admit. I don't want to follow it closely, but it does seem like there's enormous bitterness between the DeSantis people and the Trump people. Oh, there is. It's crazy. And I, I try not to get into the personal attacks. Um, I'm kind of like Trump, even on uh, X. I, I'll, if, if you want to, you know, I'm a shit poster. If you want, if you want to come at the shit poster with yeah. two million followers, come on <laughs> in an army of, you know, foaming at the mouth, just <laughs> waiting for me to say something, uh, you know, to get on somebody. But I very seldom. I don't just attack first. I, I, but if, you know, if you keep attacking me, yeah. And but it doesn't bother me. I don't. I don't take any of this stuff personally. I mean, I don't either. You know, I, they call me every name in the book. You know, um, what, what I'll, I'll be called. You know, that they'll. You know, you're old. You're fat. You're ugly. I mean, that's how they fight. But, you know, which all three are kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to beat them the next round. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, um, it, people get so mad at this, and, and you have to like if you have to step back from it. And I, I think it's funny. I've lived in the real world where you know I've been in bar fights. You know, I've been I, I've real you know stuff. Um, so you know, somebody calling me ugly and old and a boomer, uh, I don't care. Yeah. Do you? I don't care. I don't even know what people say. I'm, I'm not, I, I care what the people I love think. And, that's me too. And that's it. Um, and like you, I have a lot of dogs, which really helps. Yeah. Um, do you think the breach between those two camps, Trump DeSantis, can be fixed? Here? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, you know, some of it, some people can't, but most people can. Um, but this is my first primary. I mean, it's been, I don't know if it's ever been this vicious, but. So I supported DeSantis. I'm a Florida guy, and I was glad he was our governor. And I, oh, me too. I don't get paid by any campaign, and I pushed hard, and I was so glad when he won by 20 points, and me I was too. so happy. And I think he's a good governor. Yeah. And um, so, and I try to tell people, you got, I, I, I don't want him so beaten down and hammered that we end up getting a blue governor next. You know, a, yeah. a Gavin Newsom to destroy our state. I mean, you, you're here now, um, but. Someone from his team, not crazy high up, but they asked me my honest opinion about it when he when he said he was going to run, and I was like, "Don't do it. Whatever you do, don't run." Think about, and this is what I told him. I said, "Okay, he's forty four, young, young, yeah, and he just won re-election by the biggest landslide." I was like, "Govern your state." Yeah, and it perfect. How perfect is the timing? When you're in, when the end of your eight years is up, it's right would be right getting in the meat of the 2028. That's right. So I, I this is what I tell him: support Trump because he helped you, and you don't want you don't want the Trump supporters. You, you, they can destroy you. I mean, you don't want them. You know, you don't want to turn on them. I swear. I said, look, just please. This is my advice: just have him govern, governor, support Trump all he can, and in 28. You got Biden with only four years left or Trump with only four years left. And now you're more popular. And now you have all the Trump people. You have all the DeSantis people. And you can moonwalk into the White House in 2028. Moonwalk. That's my exact words I use. What was the response you got? Um, yeah, okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, a lot of people don't take me too seriously. but it, it, it And I hate it. I hate it's going like this. But... A lot of people do take you seriously, which is interesting. It is. And and nuts. I can see why. I think you're insightful. No, thank you. How many politicians have you met personally? Um well when they when they when uh personally, you know, I, I kinda keep to myself, but uh DM wise and messaged me, they all love me when it comes to election time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, will you retweet this and retweet this? And um I can't name five people in either party i trust i just don't trust anybody anymore and they don't they don't deserve our trust the republican party i mean come on they don't know how to fight no i know the, they're over there talking about their principles and they're arresting their political opponents so you better yeah. get in the game and we get the power of the gavel and what do they do with it seriously nothing, nothing. i mean this is how you fight when you get the gavel, you do your own January 6th committee. But do you think it's because they don't understand how to fight or they're throwing the match? I I don't know if they just don't care yeah. or they don't know how or they're just cowards. But the truth is, see, this is how you fight. You get a January 6th committee and you don't allow any Democrats on it. And you put everybody on it they hate, just like they did us. You put Marge Taylor Green, Boebert, Matt Gates. Yeah. That's the January 6th committee. You don't allow them to have any witnesses. And you start subpoenaing. Let's see what Nancy Pelosi was talking to to the Capitol Police. You start well, exactly. subpoenaing everybody. And you have it on C-SPAN every day for years. And if they, if you don't start fighting like that, it's over for this country. Well, but in, and also you have an obligation to that because yeah. it's in pursuit of the truth. I know. What do you make of the fact that the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has not released the videotape, which he controls? Well, I, I told everybody, you know, that he was he was going to be awful. I warned everybody. They had that little kumbaya moment. He did. What, what did he do? Exactly what Kevin McCarthy did. He said he's going to release it. So they get the big headlines, gets everybody excited. They release 1% of one percent and then they just don't do it anymore and look what when 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 you release that the q shaman he got out of prison because of that one little five minutes think of what if they were to, just release it just release it but they can't do it it's just push the button <laughs> just push the button and release it 
I know when he was talking about Ukraine funding, he's like, well, we have to at some point do the Ukraine funding because we don't want Russia steamrolling over Europe. That was his exact words, or I'm paraphrasing close. Do you think, I mean, you'd, obviously you'd have to be really stupid to believe that. I'm assuming it's, he's not stupid. I mean, why would he say something that, like it, that? It's the, it's the same thing they always do to get us ginned up about a war. Also, by the way, if Russia invaded Western Europe, could it be in worse shape than it is now? I mean, yeah. it was the U.S. government that blew up the German economy. It wasn't the Russians. It was the Biden administration that blew up Nord Stream. Oh, yeah. And ended their main source of cheap energy. So, like, could the Russians be worse than that? Maybe, I guess. But, like, I don't well, get it. Well, you know, they've used fi uh, Ukraine as kind of their 51st state, and they with no rules. Yeah. The bio labs, which they lied about and told the truth. Uh, everybody in Washington, uh, their kids over there making $4 million a year, you know, <laughs> at some kind of company. Uh, but so I don't, I don't let them gin me up. Uh, and, and, and they try to gin you up more and get you mad. And I can't get emotional when we have 100,000 people dying of fentanyl poison in our own country. I'm not going to get emotional. I hate war. I'm anti-war. I'm the one that wants a peace deal. You're the one that wants to keep. And here's the problem with Ukraine. I think we're going to end up in the same spot a year or so from now. I think there's going to be a peace agreement at some point, and there's going to be a million dead people, and Russia's going to take a little bit of the country, and we're going to be in the same place we would have been. And no one will ever apologize and, for and, all and, those dead. And, and, and they're just going to call us Putin puppets because we want peace, and that's it. Couldn't agree more. So last, first of all, thank you for doing this. I yeah, appreciate no it. No problem. Um, last question. Do you ex So you you went from installing fiber line to becoming legitimately famous only because of your voice. You were allowed to talk in public purely democratic. Like people liked what you said, they supported you. All of that is contingent on having a voice. Do you think a year from now you will have the same voice? You will be allowed to say the things that you are saying now? Well, I hope so. But um, you see what they're doing to come after me. I, t I, t you know, I hate to say this, but I tell my family all the time, hey, the FBI could frame me. Who knows? I mean, I don't trust them. No, you I, I, mean, I hate saying that. I want an FBI that I don't feel that way about. But hey, um, that you know, they can do anything. They can, if they want to get me, they're going to get me. But I'm not going to shut up. So <laughs> that's it. I'm not shutting up. So do you feel that you will be able to reach the same audience a year from now? I, I think so. I mean, it's 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 gone up. Um, I'm, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm doing my own events now. We're doing. Um, uh, we did turd stock. I do want to mention that, which was, it was kind of a, <laughs> John Rich and I was kind of a joke. And I said, no, I'm serious. Instead of, you know, Woodstock, let's do turd stock. And Where, where'd you do it? Yeah. At the Redneck Riviera, um, uh, up at his place in November. That's was my big coming out where everybody got to see me and uh, had some <laughs> great musicians. We're actually, um, one of the uh, musicians, Angie Apero, who is a, uh, has got a, uh, you'd love this story, uh, Tucker. It's, it's the great American comeback story. He, he was, he wrote uh, a cry for uh, uh, Faith Hill and she won a Grammy. Uh, and uh, he, he was this like unbelievable musician with his voice. And um, he was on his way up, signed with a, you know, a record label. And then he had a stroke and completely lost his voice and couldn't talk. And so he spent, um, I think, 2016 2017 learn how to talk again and wow. so now he's on his way back up and uh we he was he was there and um we're um we're doing an event for him on the 24th so i'm going to just keep kind of staying in my lane and um um just do what i do you know i probably won't go into the red carpet events to meet everybody and get <laughs> pictures <laughs> uh but uh, I'm so just, we're going to miss you at Davos next week. I, yeah, I'm not going to be there. You're not going to be there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, it, I just don't. I don't seem like I fit in there. To me, I'm, I'm more of the hanging out with the people kind of person. <laughs> but, but it was nice to meet you, and um, and I really appreciate you inviting me. Oh, we're grateful to have you, Cat Turd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Free speech is bigger than any one person or any one organization. Societies are defined by what they will not permit. What we're watching is the total inversion of virtue.